What's up you guys, UFO Proof here, along with uh, Blake and Brent Cousins of Third Phase of Moon. They are releasing their movie, uh, The Night Marchers, which is a reboot of the same movie from 20 years ago, except it's updated now, a total reboot, kick-ass version. Blake, Brent, how you guys doing today? We're doing good, Kyle. Hey, thanks for having us. Yeah, good to be back on UFO Proof. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a little while, but... um. Uh, when I heard that you guys were putting out this movie, I definitely wanted to be a part of it and, and uh, show my love and support. And I think everyone needs to go out and see this. So uh, first off, let me start by, what is the major differences between this version and the version you guys put out 20 years ago? Well, uh, you know, it's a good question. And I think uh, the biggest difference from the film 20 years ago is the technology. You know, nowadays the cameras are uh, competing with major cinema, shooting in 4K, and then we have the drone technology along with Steadicam. So instead of this Blair Witch kind of film that we emulated 20 years ago, it is a reality film, but uh, kind of shot in a cinematic way. Yeah, what's kind of cool about it too is the Night Marchers is, is still canon, the original one from 2001, but 20 years later, we kind of wanted to capture the same kind of feeling, but with new characters, but kind of going down the same path. Some legends are best left alone, and uh, that's basically what happens to a TV reality crew that's in search of the Night Marchers that uh, fly in from the mainland and come to the Big Island and basically run into things that uh, are, get out of hand. So can you guys give us a little background on what the Night Marchers is, what the legend is? So for people who are not from Hawaii, who might not have ever heard of the Night Marchers, could you give us a little background on them? Well, that's a good question, Kyle. You think uh, about a legend that's so prominent in the Hawaiian islands. It basically goes back to the days of Captain Cook. The for hundreds of years, the night marchers have been seen walking at night and what they are, are basically ghosts or spirits and they're big warriors that are protecting the king's trail. And uh, apparently they come out on certain nights of uh, the month, especially when the moon is in its third phase, which is interesting. That's one of the reasons why we call our channel third phase of moon is because of our night marcher uh, movie, The Phenomenon. But let me tell you, the, the legend is not a legend, it's real. We've heard from fire department, uh, paramedics, uh, police department. Uh, the people tell them, the chiefs or the, the top officials tell their guys that work in these positions, shut up, don't talk about it. We don't want any, Thing to we don't want to know anything about this paranormal stuff, but you know, over the years after making this movie for uh, making this movie 20 years ago, we've had hundreds of people that come up to us on the islands and say they've seen the night marchers and they tell us their experiences. So we got to say that the phenomenon is real, no doubt about it. Yeah, these warriors are basically warriors that died out on the battlefield, so they're, they're kind of upset that that they, they passed on to the other life. So that's what they're doing is protecting the King's trails. And yeah, the certain times of moon nights is when they come out more, mostly, so this absolutely. Is, this is really interesting. And um, uh, this, is, uh, this is like big news, I think, you know, being a fan of uh, you guys' channel and everything, and for everyone else, um, a lot of fans don't know this, and this is something I just learned, <laughs> that the name of your YouTube channel, Third Phase of Moon, actually stems from the night marchers so it has more to do with uh um ghosts and apparitions and you know, legends like that as opposed to ufos it's that's that's where the name of your youtube channel actually comes from is is the night marchers absolutely when we uh, made the movie we've uh, did some investigation into uh, the night marchers and apparently on the night of the huakai po uh, that's in Hawaiian, uh, the, basically the statement for the third phase of the moon. And, uh, you know, I was making a YouTube channel. I didn't know what we're going to be posting. We had no idea <laughs> Excuse me. exactly it was going to be about UFOs, but I named it a uh, third phase of moon. I kept out the, cause the title was getting a little too long, but who, who would have thought that a uh, third phase of moon would become uh, you know, one of the largest UFO channels. And that's what it kind of represents now. But, Definitely. Yep. That's the origin of a uh, third phase of moon is through the night yeah, marcher legend. Absolutely fascinating. I mean, like, uh, um, just to hear like where the title of your channel, like, that it came from this. I never knew that. Um, uh, I think it's really cool. So, uh, that's a that's really cool. Something for all the fans that, uh, they'll get to learn. Um, so 
you guys were using a bunch of different uh, equipment for obviously for filming this one as you put, did for the last one. So um, this one, it's you, all the drones, the uh, um, steady cams, a bunch of you know uh, updated equipment and everything. What about the actors? Now, are you using the same actors from the first one? Are these different actors or? Well, yeah, that's a good question. The only returning original cast member is right here. Uh, Brent uh, makes a cameo, kind of like Alfred Hitchcock does. But go ahead, explain them about yeah. the other actors, Brent. Yeah, absolutely. We have uh, two leading roles from the state of Hawaii. We've got uh, Kaylee Kanakoa and Anu Leila, who are uh, big talent, basically. People that were just, uh, you know, amateur actors, really never did anything that got anywhere what's happening right now in Basically, the state of Hawaii. Yeah. Some of the, the actors, it's their first time in front of a camera, first time actually uh, trying to act. But, you know, that's the kind of characters we're looking for. We're trying to find the people that kind of match their roles. We didn't want them to act. We just kind of wanted them to uh, play themselves. And I think that's what, uh, you know, it really uh, turned out the way we planned it. After some editing and, uh, you know, fine tuning on the edit, the performance came across quite strong. As you guys uh, said, um, Brent makes a a cameo in the in the movie. Now I I had seen the uh, rough edit before um, before Brent was uh, uh, put in it, and then I had seen it after uh, um, Brent was put in. And I gotta say, um, I love Brent, and I thought I, I thought, and I and I know you guys uh, you guys always uh, downplay. Um, uh, you know, being on camera and stuff like that. However, I just got to say, I thought <laughs> that um, Brent did an excellent job and um, I was uh, super impressed. And uh, I, I just wish that we could have seen uh, Brent I, I in the movie. That we seen um, Brent a lot in more. The movie. He, so you guys, uh, a lot obviously more. you do some, so you, you guys, guys do some acting, do. but that's not, that's really not what y you guys are into. I mean, Third Phase of the Moon, when it first started, uh, one of the reasons why so many people liked it, I think, was the fact that you guys were on camera hosting the video, something that had never been seen before for a UFO channel. You guys basically started the, the you know, a U, UFO channels with a host and somebody, you know, hosting the videos and presenting them and, and gathering videos from all around the world. Uh, you guys basically started all that. So, you know, everything that everyone else does, like myself and other channels, like Secure Team, is basically all stem from what you guys had originally done. But you guys aren't really that big on being on camera. Well, you know, uh, it's fun to perform on camera. I have to admit, it's uh, a good place to be. But, you know, there's only so much you could do and you can't be the star of your movie every single time. So we think it's kind of fun to uh, bring in actors. Definitely I'm the editor behind the scenes and uh, Brent's the cameraman and we like to both direct our uh, actors or actresses in front of the camera. You know, we kind of, that's where our realm is. That's where our stick is, is to produce exactly. the content. Yeah. Of, so you guys are more fans of directing the videos than being stars of the videos. That's not, that's not your main, like you'll do it when you have to, but you guys prefer to, to be directors. And this is something that stems back from your childhood days, right? You guys were filming video. You guys have been making movies since you were 12, right? That's right. Yeah. It's been always kind of a, you know, a passion for us film. And, uh, when Star Wars came out in 1978, was it? 77, 77 I think. Yeah. Uh, that was a big inspiration. And, Mom and dad got us, um, you know, the Super 8 cameras and we're shooting film uh, at the age of 12 and then moved into the Super VHS world and, and then kept going. And uh, by the time we reached 30, we had our blockbuster hit in the state of Hawaii. So, yeah, it's been a wild ride. And now 20 years later, we're back on the big screen. It's pretty exciting. So this movie got uh, it's being released over the Halloween weekend. What, when was, what was the opening, what was the opening day of this movie? It, I mean, it just, you guys, it just came out in theaters. What day? Well, yeah, it premiered October uh, 25th and, you know, we did a statewide run. Newspapers have been covering the whole uh, aspect of it. We're showing, uh, showing it to you right now, front covers all over uh, the state. And, uh, you know, we got picked up by the major uh, KITV networks that uh, go statewide on the news and, 
they splashed that over the past couple days. We got an interview with uh, the National Public Broadcasting Radio. But yeah. what's exciting is that, you know, we're independent filmmakers and now we're competing against uh, something that's called social media and gadgets, phones. We have Hulu, we have Netflix, we have Amazon Prime, we have all the devices, we have cable, and then we also have blockbuster movies that we gotta compete against. And right now, the Night Marchers is, uh, you know, staying up there with Maleficent, Maleficent 2, a Disney movie with, uh, what's her name? Angelina and Jolie, and including The Joker, which is the highest R-rated film ever the top grossing highest box office rated <laughs> our film ever so those are the films that we got to compete against and right now we're uh, taking the, uh, we're keeping amongst the top position right now in the state of hawaii so uh, it's pretty exciting for sure yeah i think we're having a 80 per i think we're having a 80 percent uh occupancy in the theaters so that that's jamming it's pretty good we can't complain that's great let's um uh let's take a look at some of the uh, news clips and and the uh, trailer that you guys have put together and uh, show everybody what what's going on with the night marchers, what it looks like and what's going on around the state of Hawaii with it. Let's Absolutely, it. roll it. It's a weekend for fans of fantasy and myth at theaters this weekend. Tonight we preview A Knight's Tale and The Night Marchers. The Night Marchers is a big hit on the neighbor islands and opens tonight on Oahu. The Night Marchers, where the road ends, as they say, the legend begins. It started about 20 years ago, when Brent and I came up with the concept about a legend best left alone. As children growing up in the schools here in Hawaii, we heard of the legends known as the Night Marchers. We thought, what a great idea to bring the terrifying legend to the big screen, and that's what we did. And it broke box office records throughout the entire island chain. The phenomenon known as the Night Marchers took the theaters by storm. People lined up around the theaters. It was like a dream come true. And now, 20 years later, it is our pleasure to bring you, once again, the return of the Night Marchers in the biggest reboot cinematic movie ever made in Hawaii. And it's about to hit the big screen coming up October 25th. The Night Marchers? They're here to protect the king's trail. If you come across them, one is to lay down bare naked. Two, don't ever look them into the eyes. It's hard to believe it's been 20 years since the premiere of the Night Marchers at the Crest Cinemas in Hilo. And now 20 years later, we're back with the new epic showcasing the talents of Hawaii, the people, the culture. So it looks about 20 years ago, an entire film crew, some local boys, and a cop all went missing. And the case is still open. You gotta go! Now! I got this! I disrespected the Aino. I disrespected my bloodline. We've got the greatest local talent right here in Hawaii, and it's our pleasure to bring them and introduce you to them, including Kealii Kanekoa, an incredible actor who we were lucky enough to meet. I should have done this. I should have just listened to my sister Kiai. I broke sacred kapu, disrespected my ancestors. Some of the local talent and the acting right here in Hawaii is some of the best. We also have Anuheya La. Her incredible performance stills the show and it is quite a sight to behold. We heard them, drums. I was so scared then and I'm still scared. Come on, Kiai. We were just kids. It was probably just our imagination. Aole Pili Kiai. No worries. This movie is a reboot off the original film 20 years later, and we're excited. It's a whole new cast and crew from the islands and even California. We start this movie on a road trip of a reality TV crew coming down to Hawaii in search of the night marchers. Get down! Get down. Get down. Tim, stop filming, Tim! Put your face down! No, no. 
Something doesn't feel right. What happens to this film crew will leave you stunned. It's a terrifying tale of the night marchers colliding with Howleys, basically, from the outside. And the crew soon realizes that delving into this legend may not be best for their health. Wait, wait. If you don't get out of here soon, Tim, you'll be dead too. I won't wait for you. Some people ask, while filming the movie, did you experience any kind of supernatural, paranormal experience? As a matter of fact, we actually captured something on camera. You're gonna have to see it on the big screen. A real ghost phenomenon. Uh, when we showed it to our cast members while we're doing the rough edit, they were amazed and shocked at the same time. You're gonna to have to see it while it premieres October 25th throughout the state. The Night Marchers is coming. Yeah, I've seen them in the valley. As a matter of fact, last week I was hunting with my dogs and I heard the drums and I seen the lights. You shouldn't be looking for the Night Marchers. Not at all. Best you get out of here. I had on crew over here that they went missing 20 years ago. They're not even around anymore. So. Let's see how these go back where you guys came from. After the movie came out in 2001, we've heard thousands of reports from actual people that have seen the Night Marchers. They are real, they're out there. From the police department to the fire department, they have all seen it and the reports have been taken down. The safest way to see a Night Marcher is go watch it in the theaters. It's getting dark soon. That's when it come out at night. We need these shots. Come on. Before we started filming, we wanted to showcase the Big Island in a way that has never been seen before. We wanted to film in locations that have never been seen on the big screen itself. The remote areas took a while to get to and the crew was on edge at all times you could almost feel a presence as we we're doing the shoot the spirits were around us and we captured the moments on camera the actors sometimes were actually not acting and that was the great part of it the dynamic between the locals and the outsiders was basically something we needed to capture the real essence a collision between cultures Anastasia what are you doing Come on, we have to get out of here. Stop what you're doing, let's go. No, 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 no. We need all this. The Outsider, the reality show producer, Tim Borger, plays a classic role in this film. You're gonna love to hate him. The chicken skin moments come fast and deadly. Be prepared to jump off your seats. It's a thriller of a ride. It'll make you laugh and it'll make you scared. The hair on your skin will rise, I promise you. Get ready, October 25th through Halloween, statewide. Pre-order your tickets for the Night Marchers right now. Well, that looked like a very awesome trailer. Uh, I'm super excited for it. I mean, it looks way... I have seen the original. If you guys haven't seen it, make sure you get a chance to check it out. And uh, I think the reboot looks way, way better. Um... You guys can see that you guys put a lot of effort into it. And as of right now, Night Marchers in the state of Hawaii is number three in the theaters. And that's they're competing against uh, um, a Disney movie and a Warner Brothers movie and then a Cousins Brothers production independent film. So, I mean, that's uh, that's pr something to be proud of just right there, right off the back that you're, I mean, you're, you know, number three as opposed, you know, coming under Disney and Warner Brothers who have 
millions of dollars to throw against their movies. You guys did this with a very, very limited budget. Uh, like, t tell me, what was the budget like compared to your first film? Were you guys able to add to it? Was it a lot less? What was it? Well, you know, it pretty much came to about the same uh, dollar figure amount of what it actually cost 20 years ago and what it costs now, believe it or not, which is pretty amazing. But like you say, yeah, competing with the major Hollywood films that, you know, some of these uh, pictures like Maleficent too, I'm not exactly sure, but it was over a hundred million dollars just to uh, make the movie and probably another 50 to 80 million to promote it. And when we're going up against things like that with just, you know, independent two guys doing it uh, by ourselves and, you know, competing right there with them, you know, Hollywood, I think has got to uh, watch out for uh, the Cousins Brothers because, uh, you know, we can save we could save independent filmmakers and get it to the big screen and compete. That, that's what our whole goal is, is to compete. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. We started this film a year ago. We had no uh, conclusion that we we're gonna d get in the theaters and we had no idea that we we're gonna be uh, premiering Halloween weekend, but those were the plans. And we just basically made the movie and then we jumped to the next step. Let's pitch a theaters, a Regal Cinema Theaters. And that took about three months of negotiations before we even got in there. And then they gave us a green light and then the nightmare began. We had to figure out about a list of 12 things to do that had to lead up to the release of the Night Marchers and uh, we got it done. There's, there's a lot of technical stuff just producing the film and upgrading it to digital to get on the DCP projectors throughout the state and a whole other list of things. Yeah, that's something I wanted to uh, bring up. 20 years ago, it, the, it would have been on uh, film. You guys obviously were, were recording it via film, correct? And today, was it all digitally record, recorded or? Yeah, sure. And the people, the projectionists in the theaters, that this is going to be the new realm. Wait, it's going to turn from film to digital. And now uh, it's interesting. Now we're in the digital era. But instead of us touring our one film around to each individual theater at one time, now we're able to do it through the entire island chain all at once. The theaters were playing our trailer in the theaters behind the Joker and some other movies like Rambo and uh, you yeah, know, got the awesome. word out. So uh, it was digital back then for us and it's still digital for us now. I have uh, some connections in Hollywood and uh, we're gonna let it run out in uh, Hawaii. And I think you're getting the exclusive right now. It is being extended, it seems, for a second week. So right there, the theaters realizes that uh, the Cousins Brothers is competing. So we're gonna extend there. Once we see the success through that, through our Hollywood connections, I don't think there should be any problem to get it streaming online via you never know. Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime. Uh, you know, I'd I imagine estimate. in the next three to four months, yeah. uh, our fans will be able to uh, get it somewhere. Maybe even in theaters statewide. Uh, even nationally. the theater nationally. Maybe the theaters might want to spread it out. So it's still in its infancy right now.